Hello, this is Dr. Oz. Today I would like to talk about project management and specifically I will talk about variability in activity times. Uh, CPM, critical path method, we talked about this, uh, assumes that we know a fixed time estimate. For each activity, and there is no variability. So, this is a really big assumption. And third, we will assume that there is a variation because, as we know, in a project, in an activity, we may expect that activity to be completed in certain time, let's say three weeks, but it may take seven weeks, or two weeks, or four weeks. So, there is some kind of uncertainty. So, in third, we will use a probability. distribution for for an activity all right so let's move to the next slide so this probability distribution is beta distribution that's what we use beta distribution and there are three parameters for beta distribution first parameter is the optimistic time optimistic optimistic time estimate which is denoted as a uh, second one is pessimistic time estimate which is denoted with b and we have most likely time estimate which is m uh, is a third parameter in beta distribution so let's look at the expected time on, of an activity. Again, this is gonna be, this is a beta distribution. So expected activity time, expected activity time, or T is equal to A plus 4M plus b divided by 6. So here a is, uh, you can see here is optimistic time, b is pessimistic time, and m is most likely time. So we give four times more weight for most likely time, and this is going to help us to calculate our expected activity time. We can also calculate the variance associated with an activity variance of activity completion times and I will denote, denote this one with v is equal to b minus pessimistic time minus optimistic time divide by 6 square and this is the variance so let's look at the shape of beta distribution here, this point right here is my optimistic time estimate, A. This is my pessimistic time estimate, B. And this is my most likely time estimate, M. And in this beta distribution, the area right here is less than 1%, which means that there is a less than 1% chance that the project will be completed in less than A, time frame and there's also here this area right here is also less than one percent there is a chance of less than one percent that project will take longer than b and then area under this curve right here is greater than 98 percent okay so this is uh the better distribution so let's look at our example. Again, we have uh, eight activities here, A, B, A through H. And now we have our optimistic times, most likely times and pessimistic times for each activity. So I can calculate the expected time T using the formula that we talked about. So this would be one plus four times two plus three 
divide by 6. So this is going to be 1 plus 8 is 9 plus 3 is 12. Over 6 is going to give me 2. If I do the same math here, 3, 2, 4, 4, 3, 5, and 2. And I can calculate the variance as well using this formula. B minus A, which is 3 minus 1, divided by 6 squared, which is going to give you 0.11. Here I will get 0.11 as well. I get 0.11 here as well. 0.44, 1, 1.78, 1.78 and finally 0.11 as well so these are my variance values so in this problem we know that the critical path is uh, including a c e g and h so i can calculate the expected completion time t by adding those values up 2 plus 2 plus 4 plus 5 plus 2, which will give me 15 weeks. That's the estimated completion time for this project. Also, we could calculate the variance of this uh, project by summing up, <coughs> excuse me, <clears throat> Uh, summing up the variances on this critical path. So I will sum all those variances of <clears throat> activities, <clears throat> excuse me, on critical path. Beautiful. So <clears throat> let's make the calculation. Then project variance sigma sub p square would be 0 0.11 activity A variance, 0 0.11 activity C, 1 activity E variance, 1.78 activity G, and 0 0.11 activity H. So this will give you 3.11. And we can calculate the project standard deviation by taking square root of the variance, which will give you 1.76 weeks. That's our standard deviation for the project completion uh, for this, this project. All right, so PERT <clears throat> makes two more assumptions. One is project completion times follow a normal distribution two activity times are statistically independent and this is a big assumption right here because i know that the time completion for an activity let's say d which is based on other activities before can change that, that, that duration because let's say if I have an employee who's sick or injured doing the same employee another activity then if my activity C let's say is delayed the dependent activity D who's the, which is done by the same employee most likely will be delayed as well right so there's some kind of dependency normally but we assume that there is no so let's look at the probability of project completion <clears throat> let's Draw our bell curve, which is our first assumption here. Um, again, this is my 15 weeks expected project completion time that I calculated. And the standard deviation here, if I go one standard deviation to the right, and if I go to another standard deviation to the left, which I calculate this one as 1.76 weeks. So the area under this curve based on our knowledge about normal distribution, this area is roughly 68%. So I know that with 58% chance that my project will be completed between 
16.76 weeks and 13.24 weeks. Okay, so we can make that um, call. So what's the probability, I have a question, that what's the probability this project can be completed on or before 16 week deadline? So to do that, I need to calculate my z-score based on the due date minus expected completion date. Divide by standard deviation for the project. So due date in this case is 16 weeks minus expected date is 15 weeks divided by 1.76 is the standard deviation that we calculated. That would give you the z-score. And if you look at a table uh, in a textbook or online, 0.57 z-score will give you the probability of 71.566%. So it's roughly 71.5. 5-6% that my project will be completed before uh, 16 weeks. If I want to visualize this, you can just see the this area on the left of uh, 16 weeks is roughly 71.57%, okay? And I could calculate this value by using Excel as well. Let me just quickly show you how you calculate that using Excel. need to open my Excel first. I'm going to use here uh, an Excel function called normdist. All right, I'm gonna use uh, normdist function here. And then my X is 16 weeks. Standard deviation, uh, so mean is 15 weeks. Standard deviation is 1.76. And then it's a cumulative function since it's a continuous distribution. I need to know the area under the curve. And as you see here, you can get exact same value, 71.5% uh, uh, using this formula as well. All right. So let's go to the next slide. So variability in completion time uh, of non-critical activities. So um, variation in non-critical activity may cause change in critical path, critical path. So if, an, if I have an activity in non-critical path, and if it takes longer than I expected, then that could be creating a new critical path. That's, that's, that's an important thing to know. Or if an activity in a critical path takes less time, then basically that could change your critical path as well. So what project managers has provided, project management has provided so far? The project's expected completion time is 15 weeks. That's what we calculated. And there is a 71.57% chance that we can finish this project within a 16 week deadline. And there are five activities, which are A, C, E, G, and H on critical path. And there are three activities, which are B, D, and F that are not on the critical path. And a detailed schedule, we create a detailed uh, schedule using PERT and CPM. And I would like to talk about next the cost time trade off uh, and project crashing. So, uh, it is not uncommon to face the projects is behind schedule. So, you will realize in real life that uh, you will have projects that's behind schedule and the completion time has been moved forward. So, if that's the case, basically you can hire new people, buy new equipment, and so on, please, uh, to shorten the duration of the project. And this is called 
project crashing. And of course, it comes with extra costs to crash the project. And here are the steps for three steps for four sorry, four steps for crashing. Step number one: compute the crash cost per time. It could be per week, per day, whatever it might be, per time period. If crash costs are linear over time, you can calculate this as crash cost per period is equal to crash cost minus normal cost divided by normal time minus crash time. All right? Using the current activity times, find the critical path and identify the critical activities. So we find the critical path and the critical activities. And if there's only one critical path, then select the activity on this critical path that can still be crushed. Can still be crashed and the smallest crash cost per period the smallest crash cost per period so whichever has the lowest crash cost on the critical path go with that activity and then we need to update all activity times which will take some time if the desired due date has been reached, stop. If not, return to step two again. All right. So let's talk about an example. Let's talk about activity B. Here, activity B, normal time is three weeks right here. So this is normal. And it cost me $30,000 normal cost. However, if I pay four thousand more dollars, this is my crash cost, then I can decrease the duration to one week. This is my crash time from three weeks to one week. So I can calculate crash cost crash cost per week which is crash cost, which is $34,000, minus normal cost, which is $30,000, divided by normal time, which is three weeks, minus crash time, which is one week. That's what, that would give you $2,000 per week. So I need to do this for all the activities. So as you see here, I have normal time for each eight activities and the crash times and normal cost and crash cost. And if I make these calculations, I will get these values, $750 per week, $2,000 <coughs> per week, $1,000 per week, $1,000 per week, $1,000 per week, $500 per week, $1,500 per week, and $3,000 per week. And then I need to look at the critical activities here. This is critical, 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 and critical and critical. So 3,000, I need to choose the cheapest one. 1,500 is cheaper, 1,000 is even cheaper, and 750 is the cheapest here. So I would start crashing my uh, activity A to reduce some time and then I need to update all my costs and so on and critical path. So advantages of PERT and CPM especially useful for the large projects. Straightforward concept and not mathematically complex. not complex and graphical networks help
help understanding this relationship between the activities. And if an activity is on critical path, we better closely watch those activities. Uh, and also project documentation and graphics points out who is responsible for various activities and application to a wide variety of projects. <clears throat> Useful in monitoring not only schedules but costs as well. All right, so there are some limitations. Our project activities have to be clearly defined they have to be independent, which is probably a big assumption, and stable. In their relationships. Two precedence relationships precedence. relationships must be specified and networked together time estimates tend to be subjective because we cannot really know exactly how long it's going to take and there is an inherent danger of too much emphasis being placed on the longest or critical path That's it for this video. Until next video, enjoy supply chain management.